Hi there everybody, I don't know anything about politics in US, but I want to learn it with you. I'm a Russian man who brings value through my own experiences and I want to move to America in one day. And let's uh, do this together, uh, let's learn about politics uh, by video made by VOEX, it is channel called this name, and maybe it will be interesting, it, it called America's presidential primaries, explained. Only what I knew I, what I know about uh, American elections that it will be on 3rd November and maybe will be Trump there and one more man who said something about Despacita. <laughs> I, I read it uh, on the garden page and that's all let's let's look at this maybe it will be good to learn and I will comment sometimes what I understood and what I didn't let's go in December of 2007 a US senator named Barack Obama was running for president it didn't look like he would beat the well-known frontrunner Hillary Clinton hmm, okay we have uh, we had two politics like uh, Obama, Barack and uh, Clinton and they were at uh, 2007, 2008. Okay. She was nearly 20 points ahead of him in the national polls. But then one month later, a huge, huge victory. Obama won the Iowa caucus. The Iowa caucus is like an election, but instead of voting in a voting booth, you stand with other people to be counted. It's weird. But what? It is like a uh, it is like uh, if I will feel full if I fulfill this room, for example, when I sit right now, like uh, you are my viewers and you will look like uh, <laughs> right now and vote in the comment section for me and I will be a president. OK, but it's also the very first contest in America's presidential primary process. But it's also the very first contest in America presidential primary process to determine the two major parties nominees. And if you win it, it's a big deal. You have done what the cynics said we couldn't do. Literally overnight, Obama shot up in the polls. I, I, I don't know, uh, sorry if I maybe hurt your feeling about it, but uh, it looks like uh, sometimes like stand-up comedians. Uh, and uh, yes, it is all about, we can compare it with like music artists, with uh, stand-up comedians, uh, with maybe... Uh, like a iPhone presenta presentation, all of these things. It is our sphere of life. It is our realm when we live. It is different places, directions of our life. Okay. Winning Iowa turned him from a long shot candidate to a real possibility. For the last 50 years, Iowa has been a hugely Iowa. influential part. For the last 50 years, Iowa has been largely influenced part of the presidential primary system. Part of the presidential primary system. But in 2020, well... Epic failure. Meltdown of the vote reporting system. First, a bunch of technical mishaps delayed the caucus results. Then when the results came out, no one was actually sure if they were correct. Inconsistencies in the reporting of three sets of results. Okay. And uh, it is uh, something went... Shitty, yes. And it started to raise questions about whether the Iowa caucus deserves to be Cacos. so important. Caucus. Uh, it sounds like uh, we have a specific flower in um, in Russia called cactus, and this cactus, I Io Iowa ca cactus. The way America's political parties choose their presidential nominees, starting in Iowa and then with 63 other elections on 21 separate days. Starting on IO and then with such okay. was kind of set up quickly and without any real thought behind the order. So why do we choose presidents this way? Ah, I understood. It is kind of uh, practices that we have in different uh, in different states. Yes. And is there a better way to do it? To understand how we do things now, you have to go back about 50 years. As recently as the 60s, only a few states even held primaries. Held primaries. What is primaries? Primaries, primaries it like a prima donna, like when you're in the first place. Presidential primaries. I googled it before, like what is primaries, but uh, it said to me that it is in the US a pri pri preliminary election to appoint delegates to a party. Ah, primaries, it is like a pre-election, yes? Most states didn't. 
and party leaders would just pick the presidential nominee at the convention. Voters were much more divorced from the process than they are today. This is Lee. She's been covering the 2020 primaries for Vox. At that time, the people in charge were effectively picking the people that would stay in charge. Which mostly worked fine until 1968. Why, is, why are so big amount of people so like uh, emotional in this uh, type of things? It, it looks like football match. In the few primaries that year, young Democrats voted in big numbers for candidates who were against the Vietnam War. But at the convention, the party delegates instead chose the pro-war vice president, who wasn't even on the ballot in the few states that actually held primary. Primary ballot. What is ballot? It did not go over well. Now the gas is being spread, it's coming this way, and it's awful. There was huge pushback to that. The protests were incredibly effective and actually ended up in the changes that we see now. It looks like uh, time goes on a cycle. Like we are cycling all around, circling, circling. And uh, everything happens every day. And it was on 1968, almost uh, 52 years ago. And uh, ago, yes, and it happened again. Protests again, effective, and actually ended up in the changes that we see. What now. changed was the Democratic Party decided to let voters pick the nominee, with elections in each state. Republicans soon followed suit. Ah, it is uh, always uh, the same thing, like uh, Republicans and Democrats. Today, the delegates from each state still officially vote on the nominee. Today, the delegates from each state still officially vote on the nominee at the convention. Arizona delivers 58 bound votes. But they have to vote according to how the candidates did in their state primaries. To win the nomination, a candidate needs a majority of all the delegates. And big states with big populations, like Florida, have lots of delegates for the taking. Small states like Iowa have just a few. Iowa. But even though it's not a... Again? Small states like Iowa have just a few. Mm -hmm. But even though it's not a delegate powerhouse, in the sequential primary system, Iowa has a crucial job, as do other small states that vote early in the process. Let's look at the 2016 Republican primary as an example. Republican primary. It is like a who will be from a uh, Republican uh, party, yes? When the Iowa caucus kicked things off, there were 12 serious candidates on the ballot. After Iowa, three immediately dropped out. And ah, each, every section, somebody will be kicked. And it is like a TV series of Lost or like a who will be last on the island. After the New Hampshire primary a week later, three more dropped out. This is what those early states are there to do. The early states end up winnowing the field to a slate of what people might consider frontrunners. They help candidates generate hype, press coverage, additional donations. In other words, instead of the rest of the country having to choose between 12 candidates, early states help the party narrow down its options to just a few viable candidates for the rest of the primaries. That also gives voters in these early states a lot of power. A voter in the earliest state has five times the influence on deciding the nominee as a voter just a few weeks later. And a voter in the early state has five times the influence. It's five times the influence on deciding the nominee as a voter just a few weeks later. Hard mathematical equation. Okay, maybe I will uh, figure out it later. But here's the problem with that. So there was no real rationale in the way that these early states were initially determined. Iowa goes first because in 1972, the first election after the changes, Iowa said they needed a long time to compile their results, so they had to hold their caucus early. And as it's held on to that first spot, Iowa's gotten more and more important. And New Hampshire is the first traditional primary. New Hampshire is the first traditional primary. Because, because they have a law saying that they have to be first. Yep, that's it. And the questions around whether these states should go first are not new. The main problem that people... Like, uh, like law and that's all. But okay, everything should be ruled. Like uh, for everything, 
need to start from something and uh, they have chosen that this state will be this had chosen and it means that it will be will bring up over and over again is that both states are super white. When you look at the actual numeric breakdown, um, both are about 90% white. So neither of these states is very... Percentage of whites in population, census center. Ah, right now we'll be talk about like uh, white people always do elect elections firstly representative of either the U.S. or the party itself, and that's become a huge concern. That's partly why in 2008, the parties moved to more diverse states, Nevada and South Carolina, to South Carolina and Nevada, to also be early in the calendar. Then there's Super Tuesday, which started in the 80s when Southern states decided to have their primaries at the same time to try to have a bit more influence. Over the years, Super Tuesday has gotten more and more super, in 2020, one third super super duper Tuesday, so Tuesday of all delegates will be awarded on this one day. In other words, Super Tuesday has been looking more and more like a national primary. So why not just have a national primary? Okay, one moment, uh, and uh, what will be on third third November? Third November, it is. Uh, Four days after uh, Christmas, uh, how to say it? No, no, no. Dark, dark side of Christmas, Halloween, November. What is it? Uh, day. Third November. It is Tuesday too. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. A every Tuesday, yes, will be our elections. Mary. Every four years or what? And have everyone vote on the same day. The answer has to do with who would probably win. If there was a national primary today, whoever is, has the most money as well as the most name recognition would probably do the best because they're able to reach people and they already have an established backing in place. Think about that in terms of the 2020 primary. If everyone voted on one day and money and name recognition mattered the most. Bloomberg, Steer, Sanders, uh, Bloomberg, Sanders, Biden. Oh, Biden, I know him. It is like uh, one person who will be elected, maybe. And money and name recognition This matters. is who would probably come out on top. Remember that poll from December 2007? If everyone voted at once, Obama would have lost. Which brings us back to Iowa and New Hampshire. I <gasps> yes, I understood. I understood. Like it is stagely voting. If we do voting stagely, like a... Today will be, today George will vote, tomorrow will be Jack, after that will be Susan, and the uh, day after that we have different, different people who wo voted, and it means that uh, if they will vote stagely, then some people will have more beneficial from it, but another will have more benef benefits if elections will be like uh, all in time i mean that susan george and jackie started to uh, voting in one day i hope you understand me i won iowa because i spent i won iowa because i spent 87 days going to every small town 87 days going to every small town and fair and fish fry but both iowa and new hampshire they're very accessible so you can drive oh, i just like a you can go to any place and you be a charismatic man and uh, to say to people, to all nations, to all uh, folk, folk who lives in it that, hey, people, I'm a good guy, please vote to me. And the more charismatic you are, the more chances you have and the more value you bring through your speech, the better your chances around you can hold events you can go to the fair and meet with voters and also their media markets are much cheaper than other larger states like california both of those factors make it easier for a candidate who maybe isn't that well known to also make the same type of impression of somebody else who might be you know wealthier and more well resourced so the sequential system helps narrow the field and starting in a small state can a sequential system sequential system helps narrow the field help underdog candidates emerge, but emerge, nice word, 
Should that state be Iowa? Why start in Iowa? Well, that's the conversation that will absolutely happen after this election cycle. There have been a bunch of different options floated. One is to change the, the state that goes first. So which state should go first? The website 538 tried to figure this out by looking at the racial, ethnic, and educational breakdown of every state to find which one was the most representative of the Democratic Party. I don't know why did I laugh, but uh, kind of uh, like, let's do this through statistics. Party as a whole. Number one was Illinois. Iowa was 42nd. Another option is to actually just move it so that 10 states go. In. Like, uh, let's do rednecks uh, do their job first. They will elect firstly. February. That kind of dilutes the influence of Iowa, they New Hampshire a little vote. bit. And then another possibility is the idea of rotating. They talk more about rotating regions that would dominate the primary one year and a different region that would dominate the primary a different year. The way America nominates its presidential candidates isn't set in stone. The political parties can and have changed the process over the years. But it's been a while. Maybe it's time. Interesting. I want to learn more about elections. I want to learn more about uh, politics. Uh, and I want to say that I have never ever tried to read books and things about politics. And maybe need to start it. If you have your own suggestions, not like about let's learn and let's uh, fulfill our mind with that Trump is the best or maybe Obama is the best or maybe Clinton is the best or Bush. And uh, if you have uh, something like a sub... But it is all subjective. Ab uh, some of the like a third, third face look to this, please let me know in the comment section below. It will be really interesting to know what do you think about it and your recommendation, what to read, what to watch next. And uh, I'll learn it. It is interesting because I, in one day I will be in America. I said it to myself and this channel is uh, manifested. This channel is my manifestation of what's inside of my mind. And uh, inside of my mind is to learn English to move in America and try to make a living in America. Like this way, I want to do this. And maybe in one day marry some American girl or something like this. <laughs> okay, and uh, yes, I said everything. Have a wonderful day and uh, be smart and uh, believe in your heart. Uh, no need to believe uh, newspapers, believe in your heart. Bye-bye.